Welcome to Innovation Insights Live, our webinar series in which we dialogue with innovators from varied industries, fields, and backgrounds. I am Dr. Yolanda Sanders, one of your co-hosts today. So thank you for joining our first webinar, which is entitled Future Proofing the Hospitality Industry, a dialogue with the founders of hospitality internships. Dr. Valerie Salter and I are consultants with Innovation Insights and are delighted to be your hosts today. Our guests are the founders of HospitalityInternships.com. We have Tim Floor, MBA, Lisa Kane, PhD, and Robert Thompson, PhD. These three individuals are dedicated to making a tangible difference in reducing the global work workforce shortage in the hospitality industry. Each founder brings a wealth of experience from their industry careers and experiences as hospitality educators. They have seen the challenges of hiring within the hospitality industry and the direct impact of these shortages on the business world. In response, they have spearheaded the creation of hospitalityinternships.com, which is an innovative platform designed to bridge the gap between today's talent and the leadership of positions available globally in the hospitality sector. So Valerie and I are honored to be members of the Academic Advisory Committee for Hospitality Internships also. In this session, we will explore how hospitalityinternships.com revolutionizes how employers, students, and educators collaborate. This initiative is at the heart of tackling the industry's workforce shortage by fostering connections that allow students to achieve their career and professional development goals and also providing educators with vital resources for student placement and offering employers a pipeline for future hospitality leaders. So welcome to Innovation Insights Live, Tim, Lisa, and Robert. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having us, Yolanda and Valerie. It's greatly appreciated. We're happy to be here. Well, thank you. So why don't we start off with each of you introducing yourselves and giving us a little bit about your background. So Tim, why don't we start with you? Certainly. Going all the way back, I'm a Baltimore, a native of Baltimore, Maryland. Grew up in Omaha, Nebraska, and got started in the hospitality industry when I was 15 years old at a uh, reception hall in Omaha, Nebraska, and uh, fell in love with the industry. Um, started my at college, University of Nebraska, Omaha, where I was an economics major. I later moved back east to Maryland, Delaware area and graduated from the University of Delaware's hotel, restaurant and institutional management program in the mid nineties. From there, I managed hotels, restaurants, and corporate dining in both the mid-Atlantic region, the uh, resort towns and at the Maryland and Delaware beaches. And then I moved to New York city and spent seven years there and with a few large companies working corporate dining in, in hotels there as well. Transitioned into academia in 2011. I uh, was offered a position at Drexel University in Philadelphia and really got my, my first taste of academia and, and, and never, and I haven't looked back since. So, I uh, started with at Drexel and the dean that actually hired me at that program came to the University of Memphis in 2012. One thing led to another and he somehow had got me uh, to come to Memphis, Tennessee. So I've been here since 2016 and right now I am the, uh, an associate professor of teaching at the University of Memphis. I, did oversee the internship program here. And so, yeah, that's how we, someone got started with this. And that brings me up to where I am today. So we've, we've been here, a proud Memphians since 2016. Well, wonderful. Excellent industry experience. Lisa, why don't we have you go next? Thank you so much, Yolanda and Valerie. And thank you for that warm introduction as well. My name is Dr. Lisa Kane. I am an associate professor in the Chaplin School of Hospitality and Tourism Management. I have fine dining restaurant experience in hotels. I earned my PhD at UNLV in 2015 in hospitality administration. Um, and I've been working for the Chaplin School ever since. And um, I focus mostly on marketing management, global issues and competitive methods. Um, I do a lot of studies in technology, but I also help to rewrite our program's internship course. And it's, it's something that's really near and dear to my heart because our student success is really 
what this industry, academia, is all about. We want to see them thrive in our global, dynamic, diverse, culturally expansive industry. And I, you know, we've seen so many challenges and hurdles trying to position and match our students with the best employers. And one great way to do that is through internship experience. And so when Tim approached me with this idea for this initiative, I jumped and I'm very honored and happy to be a part of it. So wonderful. Thank you for sharing that background and then also how you joined um, this initiative. Robert, how about you? Well, thank you again for inviting us. I appreciate that. I'm going to tell you that my background's fairly similar to Tim's. I started out, I'm not going to tell you what year, as a busboy at the Biloxi Hill way back when in the banquet department. And then after I got my undergrad, I moved out to Vegas. I worked at Circus Circus. And back in that time period, that was the driving force in the marketplace. Then I moved down to Los Angeles, Beverly Hills, worked at the Beverly Pavilion right there on Wilshire Boulevard. I've been a cruise director, country club manager, hotel manager, ended up working with Wyndham Corporate for 20 years, took advantage of the tuition reimbursement program to get my MBA and my PhD. I like to tease everybody and say half of the time that I was with Wyndham, I was in school. Uh, but like Tim, I transitioned to academia full time and um, haven't looked back, kind of having a second career. And uh, just like Lisa, I was approached with this initiative. And the two offered uh, for me to be a partner with them, and I jumped on board. Wonderful. Uh, what a dynamic team the three of you make. Oh, I will turn it over to Valerie, and um, she is going to host the rest of the discussion. Thank you, Dr. Sanders. Thank you all for being here today. Welcome. It's such an honor to be on this webinar with you all. And jumping into the questions here, when we're thinking about your founding vision and inspiration for hospitality internships, what inspired you to create hospitality internships and what gap did you see in the market? It's a great question. We, well, starting off, uh, when I, I was able to see the benefits of, of having a solid internship program during my time in industry. And when I transitioned into academia at Drexel University, they have a very strong co-op program there. So I was able to glean a lot of, of, um, of great tips and strategies for, uh, for overseeing and, and running a strong program for my time there. And when I went to the University of Memphis, one of my first tasks was overhauling the internship program and bringing some more structure to it. And as I did that, that's around the time where I joined Cree, which most of us are members of here, which is the Council on Hotel, Restaurant, and Institutional, Institutional Education. Um, so I joined that as well as CEIA, which is the Cooperative Education Internship Association. So I was trying to get as much knowledge from the academic side as I could to help strengthen my programs. And throughout that experience, I, I found myself talking with a lot of my peers in academia and seeing that they were having the exact same problems that I was in trying to bring structure to the program. And those, um, and, and those issues were as follows. So like, like most internship coordinators, we probably have a dozen calls or emails from employers who are looking for interns. So it's, as an internship coordinator, we, we're, we're tasked with not only trying to help our students find these positions, but, you know, making sure that the internships that the employers are coming to us with are quality internships. So they meet the academic rigor that we need to, uh, within our program. So with that, I created handbooks for both employers and students. For employers, it was a way to help bring structure and show them what we needed from an academic standpoint. And for the students, so uh, you know, we had to um, take a look at that and help with the professional development, the pre-internship, kind of bring everything into a, a nice system for the students so that they would be able to uh, maximize their internship opportunities there. And so. That's what actually started this was the need to bring that structure to both the academic side and to those in the industry. So as I was at some of these Creek conferences, talking with Robert, talking with Lisa, um, you know, we were, uh, we started kicking this idea around years ago and about uh, what we can do, because in terms of the job of the boards themselves, the platforms, 
most universities use one or two different platforms, which I won't name, but are, we're supposed to send employers to those platforms, what career services is using. And the problems is the problems are that students don't really go to the site and employers aren't really, um, half of them follow up with it after we guide them to go there. So it's really a, a part of, um, you know, the employers aren't going there. The students aren't going there. So we end up playing matchmakers as internship coordinators and trying to fit everyone into it, get everyone into their internships. So Robert Lisa and I have had a great friendship over the years. We started kicking it around. Turned out last summer, we had the opportunity to, to move forward with this and, and we never really looked back. It's been a great uh, relationship for, I think with all of us, we all have a passion for excellence, for student, um, you know, for student success. And that's what launched it. Great. Thank you for sharing the story about how the team came together and the concept of hospitality internships. So with the platform of hospitality internships, how do you differentiate your platform from some maybe other internship platforms that are out there and available to students with the hospitality industry? Well, with our side, what differentiates us from some of the others is that we're industry specific. We're solely about uh, hospitality um, hospitality positions. And that's the first thing is where it's not, we don't have all these manufacturing or other jobs in there that are, that are overloading the students when they go on job search boards. So that's number one. And within that, we have seven different categories. Once students go on, we kind of broke it down by category of clubs, meetings, events, food and beverage, lodging, travel, tourism, hospitality, healthcare, vendors and institutional management. So uh, for those vendors who are supplying the industry and also for the large institutional management companies like the Aramarks and Sodexos of the world. And lastly, sports management. So we stay within those stories for right now. That may expand in the future. We may bring on, once we have more cruise lines on, and that might be a separate category for that, but everything is industry specific. Um, second thing is that we're only focusing on three different types of positions on the job board. It's only internships, and they all have to be paid internships. Second is manager and training program opportunities. And third is uh, entry-level management positions. We tell all the employers when they come on, when they approach us that, um, you know, we don't host full and part-time jobs. We're not going to fill every one of your staffing needs. But what we will do is help provide a deeper pipeline for talent within hospitality management schools across the globe. So that's one of the main differentiators. Second is that we're not a transactional job board. We really truly believe, as we'll talk about today, in building a community and making sure that that we're providing a, a strong bond, a strong relationship between employers, students, and the programs that the students are attending. Um, and uh, lastly, global reach. Uh, from the very beginning, we knew that we didn't want to be just in North America or the United States. So. Uh, we researched and found over 1,100 hospitality, tourism, and culinary arts schools across the globe, and we've been doing outreach to all of those schools. So right now, of course, we're just starting, so it's a, you know we're still in that process, but we, you know, it is a global reach that we're that we are trying to attain, and well on our way to doing that now. So I think that's what helps differentiate us. Robert, do you have any? Yeah, Dr. Salters, if you don't mind, I'm going to jump in here. It's one of the things that I would separates us is we offer career fairs well, again it goes back to our the theme when you talk about hospitality internships is connection we're trying to provide a connection for the students for educators and for the industry it's trifold right and so those career fairs are an opportunity for the industry to get in front of the students for the students to be able to let's just use the word shop right because there are different sectors, like Tim was mentioning, there are different opportunities there. So that's one thing. Then we also have the learners to leaders or yeah, learners to leaders sessions provide an opportunity to enhance those skills, to learn more knowledge, whether it's coming from academia or from the industry. Then, like you had mentioned, we also have our advisory boards for academia, the advisory board for industry. So there again, we, we've got our finger on the pulse of what's happening, whether it's in academia or in the industry. So we're separating ourselves because we're passionate about the industry. You've heard about our backgrounds. We're not in this, forget it, 
platform that's out there where, like Tim was saying, you've got to go in and maneuver your way through to find what you're really looking for. We have algorithms that are going to set up that's going to help pair you with those opportunities that you're looking for. You're able to peruse, get industry that can go and they can look at the students as well. But it's again, it goes back to connection. This sounds like your platform is doing a great job of connecting all the dots and providing that broad base industry, you know, all of the things that are within our industry and all the careers available. Sounds like you guys are doing a great job on your platform with all of those things. So in thinking about your platform, how do students and employers connect through your platform? As you go on the platform, you'll see we have a very uh, simple registration site for students. So um, uh, they go on create a, a student uh, professional profile. And in that, they upload their resume. They're able to uh, put what their interests are, where they want to work, what they want to do, what they're looking for, an internship or an entry-level management position. And then they can also go on and search for positions through either our featured companies, which is located right on the, the main page, um, for, through job search, um, you know, through those filters. And we also, we're just, at, just now adding uh, Wix, um, onto our, the Wix platform. So students can create their own e-portfolio and employers can see that. So students can either connect with employers that way. Also employers can connect with the students by, uh, depending on the package that they have, they can go in and look at the uh, student resumes. Now that's something that the students have to opt into, but they can, uh, just click a, uh, a box on their, as they're registering and that allows employers to contact them directly. So it kind of works both ways there. And then students will go on and apply directly to the, through the site, to the employers. Um, we also have, uh, several other ways in which they can connect. As Robert said, we have a, a virtual internship and career fair. We just had our first one in March, uh, on March 15th, had over 800 people coming to that, which was for the first one, really good. I know that both you and Yolanda were there, but they can connect that way with some of our feature employers and also through our professional development workshops. So. Um, like the learners to leaders, professional development events that Robert told you about. And we're also going to have some of our industry leaders in who are leading professional development workshops and they can connect with employers that way. That's great. I know you mentioned the learners to leaders and you mentioned the algorithms that will help students guide through your platform. Are there any other unique features and services that hospitality internships offers its users that you'd like to mention? Sure. So. The beauty of this platform is that first and foremost, it is free for students to use and it's free for academia to join as well. Really, we want to make our industry as accessible to our future leaders as we possibly can. And I think we all know that our future leaders hail from a very diverse background, socioeconomically speaking. And so we want to make sure that there is an accessibility feature that we provide for them. We see our platform as a complement to those schools that have very robust career development centers and as a supplement for those who have maybe less expansive or extensive resources at their disposal. We also see this as a great way to get high school students interested in and informed about and engaged in our industry at an earlier age and giving them the tools that they need to be able to connect with the right people. We also see this, as I said before, as a complement for those schools that maybe have a really excellent reach among certain local um, industry leaders, but maybe not global or maybe not national, depending on the size of the school and their career development office. And so that is one of the key features that this provides. Um, I, I also think just to further emphasize all of the myriad tools we have at our disposal in the learners to leaders, we have everything from resume development to professional advice, in addition to career advice. So it really is a robust and comprehensive platform. And just to further emphasize what both Tim and Robert have said, this is not a plug and play system. We want this to be a community. We want this to be a source of two way communication or perhaps three way communication between academia, the students, and industry so that we can really create those meaningful connections and help our students to succeed in this uh, field. That's great. And I really like the point you bring up about helping the smaller programs or, you know, smaller schools connect with the global community and even the national community. 
I'm at a smaller school with a smaller program, and that's one of the challenges we face. We have a great local reach, but we want to set our students up for success and expose them to so, some of those national and international opportunities. So I, I really appreciate the platform for that. Um, so moving on to maybe another theme of questions here, when we're thinking about the impact and maybe um, some of the some of the success stories that you anticipate for hospitality internships, how do you envision hospitality internships shaping students' careers or enhancing employers' talent searches in the future? Well, it's just like what you were talking about uh, between you and Lisa, the how it opens up opportunities to some of those more rural, smaller schools that may not have the connections. And it doesn't even have to be, um, it could be a community college, right? I mean, you've got students there that are looking to get an internship and, and find those entry-level management positions. So let's just think of it from a student perspective. If I was a student in the Midwest and maybe my family frequent vacations down along the Gulf of Mexico. And I love that area. And maybe my instructors don't have those connections as we were just talking about. I can go on our website and I can peruse and see which opportunities may exist, whether it's New Orleans or Pensacola, Biloxi, Gulf Shores, you name it. And I can find something that aligns with my interest and my skill set and my potential career path, whereas that may not exist without our platform. Right. That's a great point. Mm -hmm. um, and what strategies are you all implementing or planning to implement to gauge the success and impact of your platform on the hospitality industry in the future? Monitoring the success of the, the matching, right, of the students with the industry and so forth. We'll be using surveys and monitoring because we foresee this as being, once the connection's made, we're going to continue to move up within that organization. We do not anticipate any challenges or issues, but we will be monitoring to ensure, just like Tim was saying, that it's a good fit, right? Uh, and the algorithms will help with that in that regard as well. Plus, the, um, the industry will take I mean, this is not their first time. This is not their first rodeo. They know how to find the right people for the positions that they have available. But again, it goes back to just providing the opportunity, the means of connecting with those opportunities, whether it's domestically or it could be, a, you know, abroad. Yeah. Great. Thank you. And you mentioned challenges during the last thing you were talking about. Obviously, you guys have worked really hard, like you said, to have that trifold approach to have your pulse on the industry and what students are needing. What are some of the challenges or maybe the biggest challenges you've faced in getting hospitality internships off the ground and how did you overcome them? One of the one of the biggest challenges that any company starting up that on a doing a, a job order or anything similar to this is dual audience acquisition and trying to bring in both of uh, students who are using the site and the employers to be able to provide jobs for that. So, um, and really with that, it takes a, a segment and investing and on social media to, to the different, you know, different stakeholders and, and the members of your audience. So as we'll talk about in a minute, we, we've taken a couple different approaches with that to both build up our, our industry base and the, and the positions that are there and building the students up, um, and students going onto the site. So. With that is it's it's building trust and credibility with with um with both the students and the um uh and the employers from an empl from our standpoint if we were to when we actually launched this site when it went live you know if we had no jobs in there whatsoever um you know if, if we you know it made no sense to really reach out and our major rich students so we had some industry powerhouses like Encore Global, MM International, Royal Hospitality, Valor Hospitality, some of these companies that we were working with prior to the launch. And so they were have been huge supporters of us since the very beginning and believe in what we're doing. And um, so we had already had them on the site as we launched. And they knew that we were starting up and it was a um, a new venture for us. And, and they understand that. But that gave us the opportunity to then start going after the students and the student population and the, those at the schools 
to get to go on the site. So uh, we started our outreach to with like we did with you, Valerie, with the with our academic advisory committee and sharing the news of what we're doing and getting buy in from those in academia so that they're sharing that with the students. So and we're doing that through a variety of different ways and getting the word out. And while it's a slower approach to launching, I mean, um, you know, it, it's, it's not where we could just flip the switch and have a hundred thousand students going on the site and tens of thousands of jobs. We're taking a slower approach. And I'm proud of that. I'm proud that we're able to do it the right way. We're able to scale responsibly. That's going to be crucial for, to our long-term success. So uh, right now I couldn't be, I couldn't be happier. We have students from over uh, 70 different programs who are on our site now and have professional profiles. We have some industry positions there, global positions. I think we're doing things to, you know, slow, but we're getting there. And I think it's a testament to the great work that, that our team's doing as well as the academic advisory committees and the other, the other industry advisory committee that we're launching and all the stakeholders that are really behind us and throughout this launch. That's great news. One of the things that I think makes the hospitality internships and your team so powerful is all of the industry experience that your team brings to this platform. And so thinking about industry insights and trends, from your perspective, what are the current trends shaping the future of the hospitality industry? Well, there are myriad trends shaping our industry, and I think the largest and most pervasive is obviously technology, tech integration, not just how we use technology as customers, but when you're managing running a hospitality entity, you have to think about how your customers are using it, how your employees are interacting with it, what you do when things don't work with technology, what you do when things do work with technology, when people want more or less technology. And so how we can enhance guest experiences and streamline our operations and improve our efficiencies without detracting from employee morale, customer experience, um, you know, all of the, the myriad technologies that we can use to streamline check-in processes and payment processes and personalization, which is yet another trend we've seen. They're becoming pervasive, but knowing how and when and where to implement them is going to be crucial for our future workforce and knowing when it's going to influence other aspects of the work experience. The employee satisfaction and experience is also something we have to be very mindful of. Um, we're also seeing a huge emphasis in sustainability, not just sustainable, not just recycling and, and um, sustainable efforts in that regard, but for sure corporate social responsibility, corporate social innovation, being concerned with the social and economic welfare of the areas around the organization, not just the, within the organization proper. And so how that influences not just the landscape, but also the community well-being. Um, so that's something that we're seeing more and more of. Health and wellness is pervasive. We need customer well-being. We need employee well-being. We need mental health emphasis, physical health emphasis, and how we can accommodate both the guest and the employee in those aspects. Um, we've mm -hmm. seen a huge emphasis on personalization and customization, but we've also seen from the employee side the need for organizations to cater to them and maybe give them a little bit of autonomy and, and job agency and job crafting. Um, and so that's something that we need to think about. And maybe we can lean back into well-being and technology to foster that. We've obviously seen from a customer's side an increasing trend in leisure, remote work, staycations. A lot of that was spawned from COVID, but I think they, they're they sort of trends that are here to stay. And so being mindful of that and what the hotel can offer in terms of accommodating guests with high-speed internet and Wi-Fi. Um, we've also seen, I think, especially after the pandemic, people are more and more interested in food experiences and culinary tourism and trying new things. And so those are just a few of the trends that we've seen. And so we want to make sure that the students that were inviting onto our website, which are all students, are able to find jobs that, you know, really speak to them and touch on those things that are important to them, but that they're also aware of all of these trends so that they can go into the workforce and provide those valuable customer experiences for the hotel customers, the restaurant customers, the cruise line, the 
club management customers. Absolutely. And that's, like you said, a myriad of things to consider for trends in our industry. And happy to see that the industry is taking, you know, a look at the internal stakeholders of each organization, as you said, for employees. Um, So with all of those things in mind, how do we see the role of technology evolve? I'm sorry. How does, how do you as the hospitality internships platform and team stay ahead of the curve regarding those industry demands and technology advancements, which is, I'm sure, a great challenge. That is a huge challenge. Uh, from the time we probably started this podcast, this, this, this recording 30 minutes ago, technology has been changing since then, and probably some things are outdated by this point. And so I'm, you know, I'm happy to say we are not on the cutting edge of technology. We're really not. But uh, I really think what we are, pion- you know, uh, we're pioneering a new way of networking, and we're really good at building those networks and those relationships with those in industry and academia. And that's something that um, we can always fit the technology around that. So we were originally looking at the site and, and looking at how to build this out and bring, um, you know, different webmasters in and people to develop. Um, we had all these thoughts in mind of how we're going to do this, but there's not one site out there that can do everything that we're doing. So we're, in essence, we're needing to take some things from here, from there. We're integrating Wix. We're integrating a couple of other sites. We use proxies. So when you go on to our site, you'll find. Uh, when you go into our community and look at the the map that's there, you can see all 1,100 plus schools and the businesses that are that are advertising with us, and that's a different piece of technology. So, um, again, it, I think what we are doing really well is the ability to make those connections to to pull, you know, the the best from everywhere. So we are, I think, connect being that that bridge that connects industry and academia. And with within our job boards, job board itself is we use a company called J Board, which is a a company that actually saved us months to from coming to market. So um, we were able to utilize that. Um, and I'm on the uh, calls with their owner at least weekly, and we're making modifications all the time to the site and what we're doing. So um, and all those things are fitting into our business model, which is really to to connect students with academia and stay focused on that. Because if not, there's always that new shiny object out there in terms of technology that people are willing to jump on to think it's going to help them in their business. But really the strength of us is the network uh, and the framework that we're developing with all of our stakeholders in industry and academia. Great. Um, so obviously, Tim, you talked about you're proud of doing things the correct way, striving for excellence and slow starting with this process and this platform and ensuring that you guys are doing everything that you want to be doing to keep the pulse on industry. What are your plans for future direction and expansion of hospitality internships? Um, Are there any new features or expansions that you have in the pipeline? Certainly. Well, and while, while we can't announce it today, uh, we have signed three strategic partnerships with uh, some very large organizations globally, uh, which will be announced over the next couple of weeks, which are which are going to be game changers uh, for us. Really, that's a way that we're going to be able to connect with uh, people internationally, nationally, statewide, and local. That's part of our of what we're doing and getting involved with organizations like that. Uh, you know, we've done a lot with with Cree, which is a global organization, international Cree, and also uh, we're getting involved with a lot of, of, of global companies as well. But really at the state and local level, it's where we're a few of these announcements are going to be made as well. So state tourism and, and restaurant associations, local organizations like CVBs that have um, a lot of businesses there. These are all the, the partnerships that we're working on right now, uh, which is going to help us to be able to grow. Um, also with that is the committees that we're, we're forming. So as, as you both know, you, both you and Yolanda are members of our academic advisory committee. We currently have 65 outstanding educators from across the globe who are members of that, and that's continuing to grow. And then we also have our industry advisory committee. So with that, um, we're, our goal is to successfully bridge both of those entities and with another strategic partnership that we have coming, which is with a company that's going to help us create internship standards for our industry globally. So, um, you know, if, if companies are needing help putting up, getting an internship program together and forming one, we'll have the resources there for them to be able to do that. A lot of companies need help with that, but 
there's also huge advantages to it for them. You know, they, they, really, they want to interview once and, and hire twice for both the internship and what comes after that. So, because um, what I've found, and I don't know what the, industry, what the uh, percentages are across academia, but roughly 72% of students within our program at the University of Memphis, if they have a successful internship, they're offered a job right after that. So the companies see the benefit in this, in, in having a strong internship program. We are working with both, you know, uh, with all of our stakeholders and, and CEIA, the Cooperative Education Internship Association. We have some of the top experts in experiential learning and uh, work integrated learning. who are coming together to help create a framework for internships that we can put out there globally. That's great news. I think that's one of the key aspects when we're thinking about internships for all of our students. And I know that's something that myself and my team here in our program have worked diligently to take really a deep dive into, you know, how our internships are structured and how we're helping these students select these industry partners to go into their internship. And it's very important that industry and the program are on board with their expectations from each side. Right. And, and that's key for sure. And Lisa may have spoken a little bit to this next question, and maybe she could expand um, a little bit. How do you see the role of technology evolving in hospitality education and workforce development? Well, I, I think that obviously the same goals that we have for our customer experience, we have for our student experiences, right? So we want to enhance their learning experiences through technology. We have... Um, you know, interactive technologies, personalized technologies are the technology we have at our disposal, not just with the learning management systems, but also with the myriad plugins that you can add to enhance the learning experience for students, including YouTube videos and other smaller um, videos uh, can certainly supplement learning and also complement different learning styles, making it more accessible to our students. It also, because we have so much access to so much content these days. It makes um, learning more affordable for students who may not have accessibility to be able to purchase a $120 textbook. Um, there's also blended learning models that allow for integration of technology into the classroom and hybrid style teaching. So you can deliver dynamic, multimedia rich content. Uh, we can also use data-driven decision-making with regard to how classes are taught, when they're taught, where they're taught. Uh, we can analyze student performance in the class. We can also get their perceptions of teaching and their evaluations in that regard. We can blend that with peer evaluations and use all of that data to make informed decisions about what we choose to include, how we choose to include it in our course content going forward. We've also seen a pervasive amount of certificate programs coming to light as well as skill development programs. And so making sure that we're staying abreast of those types of uh, micro-credentials and badging opportunities and infusing those into our systems. And we are an applied field. There is a need for workforce training and development. We can use simulation models. We can certainly bring technology into the classroom with regard to simulating a real workforce experience. We can also teach our students how to work alongside robots, how to fix the robots, right? So we have facilities management courses. And, and I think a huge aspect of those these days is how to interact with, engage with, and make sure that your technology is operating functionally and at an optimal level to provide experience for your guests. So overall, it is revolutionizing not just our industry, but how we teach our students who are going to be the future leaders in our industry. It allows for immersive learning experiences. It allows for experiential learning. It allows for personalized instruction among students, as well as data-driven decision-making and skill development. So really, it's just an integral piece of how we teach these days. Very true. Very true. I think one of my favorite things that we've talked about today is the importance of community building and what hospitality internships have done with the platform and that the team recognizes the importance of community building with industry, academia, and these future leaders of our industry. So it, with community building and collaboration in mind, could you discuss any partnerships or collaborations with educational institutions or industry bodies that have been pivotal to your platform's growth? Again, I think 
the strength and really it's absolutely essential for us. I've known that from the very beginning is these relationships with educators like yourself and Yolanda and all the other educators that Robert and Lisa and I have the privilege of getting to know because we're all in the same boat. We all want the same thing for students. Uh, we want them, we want their, them to be successful. And so, you know, that's why we've had so many people who are uh, passionate and wanting to join our advisory committees and be a part of what's, of what we're doing. So, and that's all that positive energy and that, uh, you know, everything that we've done so far has been, it's been building. And through that, again, we have a couple of relationships, which I wish I could announce right now, but I can't, but there's going to be huge announcements coming out shortly for both in the hotel sector and in the restaurant, uh, on the restaurant side. And then, uh, we are slowly, but surely growing globally as well. So like I said, in the next couple of weeks, you'll be seeing something come out, but we truly mean this when we say that we want this to be a community and not just a transactional job board. People can go to other sites and look for jobs, but really we are what we are and we're going to, and we're trying to do that really well. So that is, uh, helping programs and students get all from the right start in their career help give them the tools and resources they need to be able to do so. It's very exciting. Um, and I look forward to your big announcements and hearing more about those. Um, for the next question, we've talked about this all throughout our time together today, and maybe there may be something that you want to add a bit, but how does hospitality internships contribute to building a community within the hospitality industry and why is it important for the sector's future? I'm going to jump in here if you don't mind. Do you mind, mm -hmm. Tim? <laughs> so basically, oh, one thing I would say is we focused a lot on this, and rightfully so, talking about the connection. But I would say one of the things that surprised me thus far is coming together of academia. Our educators are getting to know one another, work together as one for the benefit of our students. Whether it's the learners for leaders you know, sessions that we're doing or working on the panels we talked about with the advisory boards, but it's just been fascinating to watch, like I say, everyone coming together as a community and working for the need and the benefit of our students. That's great to hear that so many people are willing to come together on behalf of the students and their future success and ultimately the future success of the industry. So that's really encouraging to hear that. Would anybody like to take the question or maybe all of you want to answer the question, who have your biggest inspirations been in your life? It just takes me back to when I was a bus boy in the banquet department at the Hilton and I worked for Liz Allen. Liz Allen was a tough cookie and all of us, I'm sure that have been in the workplace. We've had our times with those individuals, just a little nugget that I'm going to tell you. I remember I learned so much from her. I learned everything about how to display, how people visually dine with their eyes before they taste anything. But I remember polishing the silver. This was back in the days when the Hilton, you didn't do anything without silver being on the table, banquet tables and such. And I remember polishing the silver and I said something to Liz Allen and I said, I don't even polish the silver for my mother. And she said, I pay you. <laughs> and that stuck with me. But I learned so much from it. And, and I would say that in every workplace, sometimes we learn what not to do versus what to do in some workplaces. And that's very beneficial. And I think, and not to get on a tangent or get on my soapbox, but I feel like sometimes we jump ship too quickly and we don't realize that there's a lesson to be learned and a reason why we're there. You know, if to the students that are listening, I would say be cautious about jumping. And I fell victim to this when I was in Los Angeles. I jumped from one hotel to another hotel. And lo and behold, I got into the exact same environment at the other property than what I, where I was at initially. And again, that tells me that there's a lesson that I'm supposed to learn. There's a reason why I'm there. So just be mindful of that. Excellent points. I, I try to explain that to my students as well. There's value in learning in different environments, right? Even if you know that environment or that organization may not be the perfect fit for you, there's still value in being there and learning from the people in the organization for sure. Sure. I guess to answer this, I would first go, I guess the most inspirational people in my life and 
who've had the greatest impact on me from a personal standpoint. Uh, uh, my mother and father who taught me what unconditional love is, a tireless work ethic and selflessness and being the, the person that I am. And my first boxing coach and my boxing coaches throughout my youth who taught me resilience, mindset that it takes to, and the discipline it takes to do, to, to practice, to do the same thing day after day. And that work, that approach to life. And I think that transcends what I did in the ring throughout high school and college and helped me to be the person I am from a professional standpoint. I couldn't begin to list because I believe too many people out, but so many people that I worked with who showed me the right way to do things like Robert said, um, you know, taught me the work at it, the approach to, to going to work on a daily basis and given all, all that we can for our team and for our guests. And probably the biggest thing for me is my inner circle, the, the people in my inner circle in my life who are part of this team here, Robert, Lisa, and the others that we have who, who inspire me to want to do my best each and every day and to help keep this going. We know we all work other jobs. We're all full-time employees at, at our universities, but, uh, you know, their, our passion, our, our collective passion for the industry and for what we're doing here is what drives me each and every day. That's great. Lisa, would you like? Absolutely. I personally believe that we are a product of who we surround ourselves by, and that's personally, professionally, academically, um, socially, otherwise. And so if you look around you, you can really see what and who is shaping you and your perspectives and your beliefs and your ways of operating. And as both Robert and Tim mentioned, I, I would be remiss without saying that my family played an integral role. And that started with my parents and then my brother, aunts, uncles, cousins. And then, you know, as I became an adult, my husband, my in-laws, and, and now my children shape who I am and how I think about the world and how I can interact with it and engage with it to make it a better, more hospitable place for all, not just now, but in the future. Um, and so th those all shape who I am. But, uh, you know, I've been fortunate enough in my career in academia in my lifetime to be influenced and, and have access to really incredible people who have guided me to make good and better decisions. And I've leaned into them. And so my colleagues are an integral piece of that. And they, because I got my master's degree at FIU, were actually my mentors before my colleagues. And you know, if it wasn't for someone like Dr. Miranda Kitterlin Lynch, I would not have gone to UNLV to pursue my PhD and I would not have met my husband and I would not be sitting here having this conversation. So there, it's just, you never know who or how someone is going to influence you. But if you look around and take stock of who you're surrounded by, you will see where you're going. And, and then you can choose to either stay the course or change direction as you see fit. Very well said. Thank you. Thank you all for, um, very well said. Thank you. Thank you all for um, that last question and what inspires you and who has inspired you. I have one last question for the group, and it is, how do you define innovation? Well, I can start if you'd like. I think that innovation is taking something that already exists and identifying ways to make it better in a sustainable fashion that is ideally beneficial for a community or group of people. And so whether that be technology or social innovation or any other way of making the way that you operate either personally, professionally, or socially a better place, that is innovation, in my opinion. Yeah, and I always tell my students, creativity drives innovation and innovation drives the marketplace. I agree. I think it's, I think it's being keenly aware of what the in, what, what's out there and what the needs are. So we saw a need, and this came about as a, just seeing what is needed and what can we do to help fill that gap. Really, innovation is is not a lot of people think about just the tech pieces of innovate the technology needed for it, but a lot of it I think is staying grounded in, in what your mission, what your goals are, and and think how can we do it better and being constantly innovating and always trying to do something a little bit better than the day before, and that's what that's what it's all about. So keep it simple. Oh, thank you. Do any of our guests on the on the webinar have 
questions, if you do, you may put them in the chat. That would be wonderful. Well, we currently don't have any questions, any additional questions. Is there anything else that the three of you would like to share uh, with our audience? I think of anything. I think we've done a pretty good job here of, uh, of we, we just ask that everybody, when you see the site, if you have any questions about it, feel free to reach out to us at the info at hospitalityinternships.com. We're all here to help in any way we can with any questions you may have. For those of you who are watching this, the recording of this later, feel free to reach out to us if you need anything or have any questions. That's quite all right. I was just going to encourage everyone to continue to stay curious and continue to learn. And that's how we can all continue to innovate and make our industry and this world a better place. Excellent. Uh, that's a great way for us to wrap up today's session. Uh, I want to thank um, each of you, Tim, Lisa, Robert, uh, your passion for student success and engaging the industry is um, commendable and uh, is a true model for um, other academics. And also thank you for uh, connecting your industry experience and connections uh, with our future leaders in the industry. Uh, Valerie, thank you for uh, hosting this webinar. And uh, for our audience, if you uh, found this dialogue inspirational, we invite you to stay connected with Innovation Insights. And it, this recording will be later put up on our YouTube channel. So please make sure that you check it out and subscribe for this and some of our other content. Thanks again for participating and engaging with us. And we look forward to welcoming um, you to future Innovation Insight live webinars. Uh, until then, we hope that you keep innovating and pushing the boundaries of what's possible in your professional journey. Uh, so until next time, keep innovating, keep dreaming, and keep making a difference. Thank you. Thank you all.